Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're taking a look at a device from EPOS, the Expand Capture 5. This is a certified for Teams Rooms device, specifically certified for Teams Rooms on Windows because it is of the category Intelligent Speaker, which is a device that can only be used with Teams Rooms on Windows at this time, not available in Teams Rooms on Android. What does it do exactly? The device, and aside from being a speaker and microphone for the room, attachable to the Windows console by USB, it identifies speakers by their voice profile. Now, this has to be enabled for the tenant by IT admins, and the voice profiles need to be set up by the users themselves, and they have to opt into this experience, and also can opt out of the experience. All that back-end IT admin setup is not part of this video, but you can find that information in the video reference in the upper corner of the video. In this video, we'll be unboxing the Expand Capture 5, taking a look at the device closely, getting a feel for its specs and features, and then we'll take a look at it in motion in a Teams Rooms on Windows environment with a meeting actually launched, and we'll see it identify a speaker by the voice profile that's already been set up. Again, if you want to see how to do that, reference the video in the upper corner. And with that, let's dig in. Okay, let's get our intelligent speaker, the Expand Capture 5, out of its packaging here. We'll open the box, and right away we see the Expand Capture 5 sitting right here at the front in its protective plastic covering. Before we pull that out, we'll pull out our quick start guide right here. We'll unwrap that in a second and take a look. And then we take a look at this little uh, box right here. It's got ports on a couple different sides. We'll get it out of its plastic, but this is going to be a device that sits between the Expand Capture device and your power source and USB to the team's room. And now we'll lift up this cardboard at the back. We lift our Expand Capture 5 out and it is connected to the USB cord. So as we pull that out, we can see the cord, the cable coming out of the back, USB-C, that'll connect into that little black box device that we just saw. And we've got a lot of different attachments here for our power supply. At the very back of the box, we've got another USB cable. And at the far side, we've got our power supply. And with our package contents all taken out of their plastic wrappers, we see we've got the Expand Capture 5 itself right back here. We've got the little converter box. Now, this box has our micro USB and power right here on this side. So the micro USB will connect to our USB cable here, which has USB-A on the other end going back to the team's room's console. The power will go to our power supply. And then on this side, we've got our USB-C connection, which will connect to the USB-C cable right here attached to the Expand Capture 5. The power supply itself comes with several different attachments for uh, plugging into receptacles at that are appropriate for your locale. I have selected the piece that we need to attach to our power supply here for the US and it is a simple kind of line up these two prongs, slide them into place and then they will just click when they're fully ready to go. So now we're ready to plug that in. Now for the rest of our setup, we'll take this little middle piece here with our branding right on the front, and we will take the USB-C cable from the Expand Capture 5. That will plug into this side. And one thing to mention here, if the cable is not long enough to reach from the center of table where this will typically be back to your uh, Windows compute for your MTRW, you'll want to use cable extenders. In this case, we'll just use what we've got in our packaging because my office is pretty manageable space-wise. Now on the other side, we need to connect power in. So we will connect the power into that port. And then finally, we've got our USB-A and micro USB connection on this side. We'll take that micro USB and that will connect in right here. So this is all set up and ready to go needs to get plugged into the wall for power. This side goes into the Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows Compute. And finally, we've got the Expand Capture 5 on the other side of it all, which will sit front and center in the middle of our table 
where we can capture the voices of the participants in the room. A couple things to note, this should be at least eight inches away from a wall. Typically it would be, but make sure you've got at least that distance. And you'll want to use this in a room of no more than 10, uh, 20 people, as I believe the max that Microsoft lists on their website. Coming in for a closer look here, we see right up front that we've got a mute button up top. Obviously in your meetings, this will be a mute button, allowing you to mute the button. We've got our branding up front. Built into this device is a seven microphone beam forming array. You can see the design is a circular design with speakers all the way around and the ability to capture voices from all around the table in every direction. On the underside of the device, we've got these rubber grips all the way around, ensuring that the device stays mostly in place on the table and cannot be easily scooted around or knocked around on the table. And with the Expand Capture 5 sitting on our desktop, USB plugged in Teams Rooms on Windows uh, setup, we will now plug in the power. There we go, it lights up on top. Some nice ambient lighting. And we are in business to use our Expand Capture 5 Intelligent Speaker in our Microsoft Teams room on Windows setup. Now with the Expand Capture 5 plugged into the MTR and everything set to be utilized, we cannot actually use it as the microphone and speakers for the room until we come in to our peripheral settings and change our microphone speakers and our default speaker to our Expand Capture 5 in all instances. When we've got those set up, we will now have the device functioning as our speakers and microphone in the room. Okay, with our Expand Capture 5 plugged in into our MTR on Windows setup, we now need to, and I've gone through as well and set up my voice profile in the Teams client and I've set up the and the tenant, the team's tenant, with the proper meeting policies that need to be in place with the right settings and assign those policies to my user. If you want to check out how to do all that, look at the link to the video in the upper corner and get an intelligent speaker overview that tells you how to do it all. And that's where I set up my voice profile. Now we're going to go into creating a meeting and we're going to invite the meeting room. Over on our Teams Rooms on Windows device, we've got our EPOS Expand Capture 5 demo meeting set up. We'll go ahead and click the Join button and launch into our meeting. We see that we've got the Expand Capture 5 plugged in and ready to start recording and attributing our voices in the transcription. Back on our laptop, I am going to join that exact same meeting. Now, when I'm creating the meeting, I invited myself, my own individual account, as well as the room account. So I'm going to go ahead and say, don't use audio so that we don't have a bunch of echo happening in our meeting here. We want nice, clean audio environment for the voice attribution here. And we'll say, join yeah. now. And with the meeting joined, we can see <laughs> A little bit of the sausage making of everything going on in the recording lab here and the uh, the studio, but uh, looking over at the room system and coming back over here to myself, we've now got the Poly Studio recognizing, oh, someone's sitting over there. They must be in the meeting. I'm just not facing the camera, so it's a little confusing to it. We'll go into our first we'll go into people and we see we've got myself and the Poly Studio MTR. That's our Teams Rooms on Windows setup where the Expand Capture 5 is set up as the microphone and speakers. So we'll go ahead and say uh, more and start transcription. With that, we see that I started the transcription. The Poly Studio MTR started identifying people. We see that it is now capturing my voice as I speak and recording it into the transcription in the meeting. As I come up over to the speaker and say a few more words, the EPOS Capture Expand 5 continues to identify what is being spoken and it takes my voice and matches it up to that voice profile that was already set up in my Microsoft Teams client. Taking a look at our transcription, we can see that the processing in the background has indeed compared what was said. 
matched it up to my voice. It shows that I am in the Poly Studio MTR. That's where the audio is coming from, but that it's me speaking. And if we come back over here, we can see it continues to identify me. Uh, we can see that some of it comes up as Poly Studio MTR at first, but then it goes and updates later. As we are speaking, we have the option of clicking the three dots during the meeting and saying edit speaker. If we do that, it's going to give us a drop down of everyone that's in the meeting. It was just myself and the Poly Studio MTR, so we'll leave it as is, but there's the option to change that. When you do change it, you can go ahead and say apply it to just that message or to all messages that have that speaker attribution. We can also remove the identification, making it just speaker one. So for example, if I come down here and say remove identification, we'll say just this one. Now we can see that it's broken up what was said here. These are still attributed to me, but this is now just speaker one, who is also identified as being in the Poly Studio MTR room. Now that the meeting has ended, I have I come back over to the meeting in Microsoft Teams itself. Going to the chat, we see that meeting transcript sitting right there. Coming into the transcript itself, we've got the entire transcript with all the proper attributions in place. We can see where I changed this one to speaker one, and we can see that it is edited. So now we know, hey, this wasn't the original attribution. This was edited by someone. If we want to change any of this back, we can click on the three dots over to the far right, say edit speaker, and then we can change this to, you know, myself or the Poly Studio MTR. So we'll change this back to me. We'll say just this one, and then it will get updated back to where this whole string was me speaking again. So now this transcript has been updated for all to download. Up here, we've got the ability to download it as a doc if we want to. We can also delete it. One final demo. What does it sound like if you are someone on the other end of a meeting where people in the room are using an Expand Capture 5 microarray? What does their spoken words sound like to that far end user? We've got a feel for the transcription and that's all really cool, the attribution of speakers. Right now, what you hear is me speaking through the Expand Capture 5 microarray. I've got it here on the desktop. We are recording locally into the microphone array. You typically wouldn't have it this close in a Teams room setup, but we're just demoing the recorded audio. So you're hearing me now. Unmuted and you hear me once again. Really brief demo on the audio recording through the mic array of the Expand Capture 5. And there it is, the EPOS Expand Capture 5 in action, attributing spoken words to the correct speaker in a Microsoft Teams room, certified intelligent speaker for Microsoft Teams rooms, running on Microsoft Teams rooms for Windows systems. If you found this helpful, as always, please share it all over social media. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, really handy link down below, and then turn on notifications so you stay in the know whenever I come out with new product overview videos. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope we'll see you back here for the next product overview video.